Hello students, let us understand about rheology. Rheology is composed of two words, rheo and logi. Rheo means flow and logi means study. So study of flow behavior or deformation under stress, deformation of material under influence of stress is called as rheology. Deformation can be of solids also and can be of liquids also. When deformation of solid is there, this type of deformation is reversible usually and this is called as elasticity or the property of solid is called as elastic property which is given by Hooke's law. Whereas in case of liquids, the deformation is not reversible in most of the cases and therefore the property is known as viscosity and the law which follows viscosity is Newton's law. Now, the question comes, what is Newton's law? The Newton's law, the Newton's state that or Newton's law of viscosity states that stress is proportional to strain. So, this law first of all is for fluids and it states that stress, stress is force applied per unit area is proportional to strain. Strain is velocity per unit distance or velocity gradient. So stress is proportional to strain. This strain is also called as shear or rate of shear. Stress is denoted by S and strain is denoted by G. So S is proportional to G according to Newton's law. Now when S is proportional to G, then S is equals to constant into G. This constant in Newton's law is called as viscosity. Now viscosity, this means is equals to stress upon strain. So materials which are Newtonian materials, on application of stress, there will be rise in the strain and their viscosity remains constant. Now, this viscosity is basically a viscous drag or resistance to flow of fluids. The inverse of this viscosity is called as fluidity. There is also one term which is called as kinematic viscosity. Now, kinematic viscosity is absolute viscosity of a substance divided by its density. The unit of simple viscosity is poise or centipoise and the SI unit is pascals into second. Whereas the unit of kinematic viscosity is stokes. <clears throat> Let us now discuss rheological classification of material. Before moving on to the rheological classification, to understand this chapter, a very important thing is relation between stress, strain and viscosity. See. Both these three terms are interchangeable because any change in viscosity will change the strain and it will change the stress. Suppose if material is thin, then at constant stress, the strain value will be less. If material is thick, then at constant stress, the strain value will be more. So the stress and strain relationship is based on viscosity. We can also say that at constant stress, if strain value increases, means rate of shear increases. This means viscosity of material decreases. And if strain value decreases, this means viscosity of material increases. So these three terms will come in the further chapter and somewhere they are interchangeable. This we have to understand, otherwise concepts will not be clear. The second thing is, let, let us now move towards classification. So, the liquids are classified, or fluids are classified. One which follows Newton's law, they are called as Newtonian materials. They have constant viscosity. Their viscosity does not change upon influence of stress. Non-Newtonian materials are those who do not obey Newton's law. Now, what is Newton's law? Viscosity is constant. Stress is proportional to strain but they do not follow Newton's law. They are also called as structural materials or liquids. They are called as non-Newtonian. 
they are further classified into two types time independent and time dependent time independent which have no use of time means their property is not dependent upon time whereas time dependent whose property is dependent upon time time independent are further classified as plastic pseudo plastic and dilatant system whereas time dependent are classified as thixotropic anti thixotropic or negative thixotropic rheopexy and negative rheopeptic systems negative rheopeptic or negative rheopexy in the systems fine so this is whole classification let us now understand in order to understand each of these flow behaviors because all these flow behaviors are in our syllabus so in order to make them understand we have to first know what is rheogram and what is viscogram because this is the most important property of all these materials now we first start with rheogram rheogram is nothing but the relationship between stress and strain the stress strain relationship is called as rheogram whereas viscogram is viscosity versus stress or strain either of this see i have told you these terms are interchangeable so viscosity versus strain or stress is viscogram rheogram is stress versus strain now here you find in few books what i am teaching you graphs are completely opposite like the pseudo plastic graphs for them it is dilatant graph and vice versa why it is so we need to understand then in that case scale is very important stress versus strain i will teach you all the rheograms based on stress on this axis and on this axis strain but if you change the axis the pseudo plastic material will become a dilatant material fine changing axis but don't changing the rheogram so you will find like for our case this is a pseudo plastic material so this is graph for pseudo plastic material and this is graph for dilated material if you change the axis the graph will be reversed so do not get confused you have to just focus on stress and strain and accordingly whole thing is is very very simplified so in my <coughs> lecture i will be using stress on this axis and always strain on this axis fine so this is rheogram this is viscogram apart from rheogram and viscogram <coughs> for every fluid we will understand about its uh, graph rheogram and both viscogram along with examples and the important part is the reasoning why it is behaving in such a manner and the last thing is the equation